Hey everybody, we're going to go GMG Reviews. Today we're taking a look at Warhammer the Old World, Arcane Journal, Orc and Goblin Tribes. Now this is the latest expansion for Warhammer the Old World. Um, it is adding on to the two other Arcane Journals for the Bretonians and the Tomb Kings. And it was kindly sent along as a complimentary review copy by Games Workshop. So, what is this book? Well, much like the previous two Arcane Journals, this is an alternate pair of army lists, uh, expanding the Orc and Goblin tribe army list that's inside the, um, the for, it's, uh, Ravening Hordes, is the bad guy book for Warhammer the Old World. Uh, and it gives a way of playing a mounted, sort of like Wolf Rider style army and a troll army. Interestingly enough, um, I mean, there may be additional ways in the future of playing it, but uh, it, it kind of includes mostly older miniatures that were currently out of production. So much like the previous Arcane Journals, this is a 50-ish page book, full color, uh, in that cool sepia tone, um, which we've kind of come to associate with the old world and contains some background information, what's up with the orcs at this part in the timeline, um, the savage lands they live in, Wa Kilnick, looters and raiders, um, which is the Orc and Goblin tribes and the nomadic Wa, and then Brutes of the Bad Lines, which is the Orc and Goblin tribes and the troll horde, the two army lists. We get some special characters, uh, we get Kilnick Toof Snatcher, Ogdra's Swamp Digger, rules for the Troll Hags, which are the big Forge World miniatures, which is kind of nice to have in here. Um, and then some mercenary and like different stuff like Badland Ogre Bulls, so you can use Ogre Bulls in the army, Black Orc Boar Chariots, Bone Grinder Giants, which is of course again the big um, Forge World Giant. Although you could very easily use a Mega Gargant from uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar and just base it properly. Uh, and then the lore of troll magic for the troll hag and the orc and goblin tribes magic items, some of which are tied to the specific army list in here and some of which are just available to the army in general. So, what do we got? The fight and loot is what we do best. They've kind of put the fun back in orcs. Uh, the, it's, it's more fun to see than not fun to see, meaning that um, the, the, the theme of the orcs in this, of course, is much more sort of barbaric raiders than it is the... Uh, Gorka Morka following kind of weirdos that are in Age of Sigmar. We have the Badlands and sort of expanded map of the border princes in the Badlands where they're all kind of hanging out. Um, and the names of the different tribes like the Red Face Orcs, uh, the Jagged Tusks, the Stitched Skulls, uh, and then the Orc, or sorry, the Dwarf Holds that they're all kind of surrounding. I wasn't too surprised that this was, this was going to be the, the order they're doing. And they've just announced obviously the Dwarf stuff at Adepticon, meaning that back to backing, I thought they were going to do box releases like the Tomb Kings and the Bretonians where they did the army all at once. Instead, they've kind of done the battalions and they are kind of pairing them up the way I thought they would, orcs and dwarves. Um, so we'll see what's next in the pairings. We got some cool color stuff uh, and then the, the story for Wild Kilnick and then the uh, sort of bespoke scenario for using a draft pony in a goods cart. So you, if you've got your old Battle Skull Pass, you literally have a scenario for your old pony cart. I have an old pony cart, and I would love to play this scenario because it's kind of a, um, a, a, an ambush along Skull Pass. Uh, it is a dwarven caravan, and its mercenary escorts crawling at the bottom of the Snowchoke Basin. The warboss needed to strike quickly once the caravan was in position. So basically, it's them. It's Winter's Teeth Pass instead of uh, Skull Pass, but it's the same kind of idea. Uh, color section, lots of older models in here. So all of the um, the plastic kits from that generation. There's even some starter set plastics from 6th edition starter, which I love that starter set. The Choppa Choppa Boys. Uh, and then the older Wolf Riders and Boar Boys, which were relatively late edition. They were like 7th, 8th edition. Um, and then the old Goblins and stuff as well. As well as the the, the beautiful old Doom Diva. But you can even see, there's the Pony Cart from the Skull Pass box set, which is great. That's the 7th edition box. Uh, the Troll Hag, obviously, this is a big cool Forge World mini if you've never seen it before. Um, and then some of the uh, Forge World stuff like the Heavy Armored Orc War Boss, uh, the boar Big Boss with a banner, which has a half a Slayer on it, which is very funny. Well, not funny, not funny for the Slayer. They chopped his beard off even. And then this new Black Orc uh, War Boss, Armor with a Great Weapon, which is a great miniature, and I'm excited to paint at some point. Uh, and so Looters and Raiders, this is the rules for the Orc and Goblin Tribes Nomadic Wa. So the Army of Infamy, uh, you're going to change up your composition. So you can have up to 0 to 1 Black Orc War Boss or Black Orc Big Boss per Black Orc Boar Chariot. So for every Black Orc Boar Chariot that you take, and they're the special one that's in here, you can have 0 to 1 War Boss or Big Boss. <clears throat> then you can have 0 to 1 War Boss or Orc Weird Bob for every 1,000 points. And then Big Bosses, Weird Boys, Goblin Bosses, and Goblin Shamans can be taken as normal. So for your core choices, 25% of the army points have to be spent on Wolf Rider Mobs or Goblin Wolf Chariots. And if your general is an orc boss, zero to one orc boys mob may be taken as a core choice. So you can still alternate between like a goblin kind of speed freak army or an orc speed freak army. If your general is a black orc big boss, then zero to one black orc portrait can also be taken as a core choice. So your core of the army will generally be the wolf riders and wolf chariots no matter what. 
And if you've got generals that are orcs or black orcs, then you can take the other chariots as a core choice too. Uh, up to 50% can be spent on orc boar boys mobs, orc boar chariots, and snotling pump wagons. Again, all speedy stuff. And then rare is just black orc boar chariots and giants, because they can keep up. Uh, for your mercenaries, you can take the Badlands Ogre Bulls and up to one bone, grind, uh, bone grinder giant. Uh, usual uh, big boss and orc, black orc, or goblin can be made to BSB. And then you can take either the common orc and goblin um, magic items as well. So your special rules, if you do this composition, so again, like very, like no foot troops, basically. Uh, although they, it doesn't say they can't be, that they have to take a mount, which is interesting. So like, if you take a Black Orc Warboss, they don't have to be mounted. You would obviously want them to be, because otherwise they're not going anywhere. Uh, they kind of get left behind, you give them a monster or something like that, but you can take them. Uh, they get Cunning Hunters, when a Nomadic Wall Army, any number of, sorry, within a Nomadic Wall Army, any number of Goblin Wolf Riders um, can be, uh, 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 ambushers basically for plus one point per model. In addition, goblin bosses and goblin shamans that are mounted on giant wolves can also get that roll for plus 10 points. They can join the unit. Then hit him fast and hit him hard within a nomadic wa. Um, any orc bot model that is mounted on a war boar, so this is like the bonus for doing it. Uh, black orc bosses, orc bosses, orc shamans, or orc big boys gain impact hits one. And these impact hits are made using the strength characteristic in the war boar and have an armor piercing of minus one. In addition, zero to one orc boar boys mobs per thousand points can have the vanguard rule for one point per model. So it's, it's encouraging you obviously to take the mounted heroes to put in those units. And then your hunting packs, any goblin wolf rider mob with the nomadic wall army may exchange open order and skirmisher special rule for close order and horde. So basically you're making them the worst heavy cavalry, but they're kind of heavy cavalry because they get a rank bonus all of a sudden. On to move, uh, all characters within a nomadic wall must be mounted. Oh, never mind. Sorry, you can't take them foot. I, I, I missed that part. They had to be mounted. It didn't just encourage you. And then black orc bosses with a nomadic wall army are not subject to the boys or quell and pestuosity special rules. So yeah. Uh, you, you basically don't get that stuff because you're you're not you're basically mounted in top chariots, liberated from weaker orcs. So you have a new love of crumping while careening across the battlefield. You're not going to bother trying to like keep everybody in order, which is very funny. <laughs> uh, all right, so then we got brutes of the badlands. This is the, uh, the 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 troll mob basically of big boys. Uh, your characters uh, up to zero to one war boss or weird knob per thousand points. Orc big bosses, orc weird boys, goblin bosses, goblin shamans, and troll hags can be taken as well. And then 33% of your army, not 25, must be spent on a troll mob per thousand points. So for every thousand points, you have to have one. So 2,000 points, you have to have two troll mobs. Uh, zero to one additional troll mob would be taken as a core choice per troll hag taken. And then orc mobs, goblin mobs, goblin spider rider mobs, and goblin wolf, tri uh, wolf rider mobs can also be in the army. 50% uh, of your army points can be spent on troll mobs and goblin wolf chariots. And then zero to one per thousand points, boar boy mobs and boar boy chariots. Uh, and rare, 25% on giants. So again, a very limited like selection of stuff, but you'll get the additional bonuses. And they can also, as mercenaries, because they're Badlands, can take a Badland Ogre Bull unit, um, or, well, units, and then zero to one Bone Grinder Giants. Uh, usual 25 point um, Big Boss, Orc or Goblin, to be a Battle Spender Bearer, and then your usual Magic Item selections as well. So uh, you get, for your special rules, enhanced regeneration. With so many trolls in one place, their regenerative properties seem to be overdrived. <laughs> Uh, models with Regeneration X special rule within a troll army can reroll any failed regeneration saves against wounds caused by non-magical attacks. So that's very cool. So basically, if you have non-magical attacks, they become in like increasingly tough. Uh, rerolling fours or fives even is a, a huge bonus. You get Oidus Way. Uh, unless a character is fleeing, friendly troll mobs within a troll army that are within the command range of an orc shaman, goblin shaman, or troll hag can use the leadership characteristic of that character instead of their own. That means your base leadership would become the character's leadership, which is huge. And then finally, Troll Tongue. In addition to the lores of magic um, that may normally be known, uh, orcs, shamans, and goblin shamans within a troll horde can learn troll magic. So they know it because they can speak to the trolls. So let's, um, I'm going to skip the special characters for a second and just look at the magic list, just to give you an idea what that means, because um, it's just a good time to do it. So troll magic, um, your signature spell is Big Smarts. It's an enchantment on an 8 plus in itself. Remains in play. While this spell's in play, friendly units within command range of the small can reroll failed stupidity tests. That's huge. Um, especially if your command, like if it's your general, so like taking like a wizard general um, or the troll hag would make that a, a big deal. Um, and we'll, we'll see the troll hag is actually leadership eight. So that's a pretty high leadership for an Orc and Goblin army. Additionally, if a friendly unit within command range of this model uh, fails a stupidity test during the start of phase subturn, it can immediately take the test again. So yeah, that's amazing. That's like. That's madness. <laughs> uh, 
so then we've got uh, Acidic Bile, uh, Magic Missile. It's casting value 8+, plus, range 18 inches. Effect, place a small 3-inch blast template so that the center is directly over the center of a target enemy unit. It's like a stone thrower. Once placed, it'll scatter D3 plus 1 inches. Any enemy models who base lies underneath the template's final position uh, can risk being hit, and it takes a Strength 3, AP minus 2. The Strength 3 is okay, but the AP minus 2 is, that's big for, for Old World. Then Troll Brains. That's a hex, so you have to cast it on somebody. Um, it's a 9 plus, but it's 15 inch range. Remains in play. While this spell's in play, the target enemy unit becomes subject to stupidity and reduces their leadership by 1. <laughs> so you can, make it, you can make a unit have a troll brain. Uh, ravenous Recourse. Until the end of the turn, all friendly units um, that have the stupidity special rule and are within 12 of the caster gain a plus 2 modifier to their move characteristic. And Fetid Whirlpool. Uh, remains in play, place a small 3 inch blast template so its central hole is within 18 of the caster. While in play, the template is treated as dangerous terrain. The template moves d6 inches in a random direction during the uh, start of turn subphase. And any enemy unit uh, the moving template touches or moves over suffers d3 plus 3 strength 4 hits with an AP of minus 2. That's a, like, basically troll vomit everywhere. And it could be between, it's between 4 and 6 strengths, so that's a huge, like, high strength too. Torn of Filth, it's a flame template, cast on an 8+, plus, it's an assailment spell. Uh, any model, friend, or foe that's underneath the template uh, can potentially be hit at strength 3, AP minus 2, so it's like a close range version of Acidic Bile. And then Rapid Regeneration, until the start of the turn, uh, the target friendly unit gains the flammable and regeneration 5 plus special rule. So you can make your orcs or whatever else, kind of like fighting units are in your army, um, have regeneration to keep them in the fight. Um, and we'll quickly look at the units as well, as opposed to, we'll do the special characters last, because that makes more sense. Um, troll hags, so they're not fighters by any stretch of the imagination, even though they're a big beefy monster. Their weapon skill is skill 2. They are strength 6, toughness 5 with 6 wounds, 3 attacks, initiative 2, and leadership 8. But like, you don't want to, you don't want to fight with them, they're casters. They got gnarled uh, stumps, uh, which is a hand weapon, and a troll vomit, swamp breath, and scaly skin, which is heavy armor. They're a level 1, uh, and they know uh, one spell from the falling lords, either battle magic or troll magic. They can be made a level 2 for 35 points, and then purchase magic items to a total of 50 points. Yeah, close over, flammable, immunopsychology, indiscriminate hunger, uh, large target, motherly love, regeneration 5 plus, slimy shanks, stomp d6, uh, stupidity terror, timber, and unbreakable. So kind of like a giant that's also a troll. Indiscriminate hunger is during the command subphase. Uh, the troll hag that's engaged in combat may choose to make an indiscriminate hunger attack. To do so, nominate enemy unit with the, within the troll hag's range uh, that they're engaged with. You must immediately make an initiative test, and if it's failed, the troll hag scoops warriors into her gaping maw and sinks her filthy fangs into the flesh of a monster. They immediately just take a wound. Uh, if the test is passed, they manage to avoid the grasp. So it's just like a one wound, like, snatch and grab, basically. Uh, then each time uh, this unit um, uh, loses a wound, uh, as a result of an indiscriminate hunger attack, the troll hag recovers a single wound. So basically it's a heal as well. So low initiative things, you know what I mean? Like uh, Tomb Kings, uh, even, and Dwarves. They're gonna, they're gonna feed this thing's wounds back. Motherly Love, instead of attacking normally during the combat phase, the Trollhag can choose to make a Motherly Love attack. That's uh, kind of like a giant attack. To do so, nominate an uh, enemy unit they're engaged with and roll a die. Uh, so on a one to two smother, they, she throws her massive arms around the phone, a terrible embrace. Place a large five inch blast in the holes directly over the center of the target unit. Um, and any model underneath basically uh, risks being hit uh, as a single hit using the strength characteristic of this mother or model at uh, AP minus two. So a five inch blast at strength six minus two. So like I said, she's not a traditional fighter, but if you get lucky, she could smush a unit. Then mother, uh, the troll hag chastises her foe for their wayward offspring. Nominate a single model in the fighting rank of the target unit uh, to be the target of the attack. It's hit and suffers D3 strength, uh, D3 plus one wounds with no armor saves or regen available. Basically like just smacks a single model. Now but you can make wards. And then Mither, the troll hag bombards the enemy with a tirade of slaps and a torrent of unintelligible trollish invectives. <laughs> the target suffers d6 plus 1 hits, each using the strength characteristic of the model, with no armor saves permitted. Warden regeneration saves can be tempted as normal. In addition, so shocked are they that until the end of the turn, they're minus 1 leadership. Uh, her slimy shanks make her minus 1 to hit in the combat phase, and then she's got her troll vomit, strength 3 minus 2, and it's like a, a breath weapon. And her Swamp Breath, which is Strength 3 minus 2 Breath Weapon. Oh, sorry, that's the um, base contact. Basically, the Swamp Breath Troll Vomit, one's in combat, one's a template. And the Vomit's an additional attack. Uh, troll Mother, any army using the Orcan Goblin Tribe's army composition can take this as a rare choice if you want as well. So you don't have to just take it in the Troll Army. Um, I should actually talk about the Boar Chariots too. They're just, the bla they're just Black Orcs on a Boar Chariot. They're not that different. They have um, Choppa's Close Order, First Charge, Furious Charge for the Black Orc crew. Ignore Panic, uh, Impact hits D6 plus 1 and Tusker Charge. 
So you can mount a character um, on the chariot for 130 points, or you can just take them as they are. They have uh, black rooks on them, so the black rook career weapon skill four, strength toughness four, obviously, and it's got toughness five and four wounds. It's just a tougher board, a, like regular orc chariot, but cool because it's mean to panic. Uh, the Ogre Bulls, Monstrous Infantry. Um, so this is kind of a, I guess, they're just the Ogre Bulls from the Ogre Kingdoms book, but, you know, they're, they're in this. Um, so standard bull stat line, 31 points. You can take a Crusher for seven. Um, they've got additional hand weapons, great weapons, and Iron Fist if you want. So you get the Iron Fist rule in here. Extra tax one requires two hands. Count as Dogs of War. And they got Armor Bane one, Close Order, Fear, Impact Hits one, Mercenaries, Motley Crew, and Ogre Charge. They can have different weapons if you want, which is kind of nice. You can mix your stuff. And they can have heavy armor if you want to make them into um, like the different unit types. So you can have great open guys and have them be uh, like, um, what is it, Iron Guts. Neat. And then the Bone Grinder Giant, he's a 50 by 100. Strength 7, Toughness 6, uh, 8 wounds, Initiative 3, and 10 uh, leadership with 300 points. He's got giant attacks like a giant, uh, close order, immune to psychology, large target. Mercenaries does stomp attacks D6 plus 1, causes terror, timber, and unbreakable. So timber means he does the giant fall. Um, and then the different types of attacks is against little things, big things, and bigger things. So there's Crush Underfoot, Grind Its Bones, Vomit for little things, Crush Underfoot, Vomit, Mighty Swing for big things, and then Wallop, Mighty Swing, Edbutt for even bigger things. So it's just bigger things is heavy chariots, monster creatures, or behemoths. Uh, big things are monster infantry, monster cavalry, light chariots, or war machines. And then uh, regular infantry, heavy infantry, swarms, light cavalry, heavy cavalry, or beasts count as little things. Crush Underfoot's a five inch blast, um, and if you're under it, you take a strength seven minus three, which is pretty great if you roll Crush Underfoot, and you can do that to big and little. Edbutt is you just auto hit them at D3 plus one wounds with no armor saves or regens. Grind Its Bones um, is every model within the fighting rank of the target must immediately make an initiative test. Um, those unable to escape the grasping hand are scooped up and eaten whole. They're just taken as a casualty. Those able to duck or dodge away, um, suffer a table with fate. Every model uh, that passed the test is unharmed. Mighty Swing is just D6 plus one hits from the Giant's Club, which is Strength plus one, AP minus two, so Strength eight minus two. Vomit, uh, peering down at the tiny creatures makes him dizzy and sick, so he does a um, uh, Flame Template at Strength five, AP minus two. Uh, and then um, Wallop, the Bone Guard Giant, makes a uh, two-handed attack, which is Strength plus three, AP minus four, and multiple wins 2d3. So it's a single attack against the target unit, and if it hits, it's like a huge hit, a weapon skill three. He's a dog of war available to orc and goblins, warriors of chaos, and beastmen bray hordes. So zero to one. Only 300 points. He is pretty tough. So being able to like puke on things and just murder units makes him pretty great. All right, so let's take a look at the special characters and the magic items. That's pretty much it. Uh, Kicknick Tooth Snatcher is going to be the first special character. This is a uh, goblin on a chariot. So he's got charge right, on a wolf rather. He's got uh, Chompa, which is his double wolf. He's on a 25 by 50. He's got the boss's trophy rack, the skull smasher, cavalry spear, shield, and light armor. He's all sneaky like, uh, has ambushers, armor bane one for his Chompa, um, which is his ride. Armored hide one, chariot runners, fast cab, fear of elves, impetuous, it and it and run, which is hit and run, rallying cry, swift stride, and warband. He's all sneaky like, zero to one, and goblin wolf rider mobs, and the same monster as Kicknick may have the ambusher special rule for free. In addition, you can apply a plus one or minus one modifier when rolling to determine if the Goblin Wolf Riders mob with the Ambusher Special Rule that is currently held in reserve arrives this turn as reinforcements or is delayed. Uh, it and run. Should they win a round of combat, Kicknick and any Goblin Wolf Riders mobs he's joined may choose to fall back in good order rather than making a follow-up or pursuit. So after like someone runs away, they can move away. The boss's trophy rack. During a turn in which he's charged, Kicknick and any Goblin Wolf Riders mob he's joined cause fear and get plus one combat result because you just see all of his trophies. And then the Skull Smasher can, uh, is a uh, two profiles, but you have to choose which one you're gonna use. So it can be a hammer, a strength plus two, AP minus one, armor bane two, magic attacks, or a pick, which is strength, and then minus two AP, armor bane two, magic attacks, but multiple wounds two. So you kind of have like a unit thrasher, and then like a, a big hitter. So a neat unit, um, and taming Chompa is pretty, pretty awesome. He's this giant wolf. Uh, and he's kind of your special character for the riders. And then for the trolls, you get Ogdra's Swamp Digger. Uh, he's a shaman, but he's very weird because he's wearing a troll head. Uh, weapon skill four, BS two, and then uh, strength four, toughness five, three wounds, initiative four, two attacks, leadership eight, 195 points. Just a, just a dude on a 30 by 30. He's got his Bogwood Staff, Troll, Hide, Shawl, and Lore Familiars. He's level three, and he knows stuff from Elementalism and Troll Magic, because obviously he's like a troll mage, kind of. Uh, and he's got the Troll Kala. Unless he's fleeing friendly troll mobs within Ogdred's command range, can use his leadership. 
Protect a boss. This model can be targeted by enemy shooting or by enemy spells uh, while he's within three of a friendly troll mob, unless he's the closest model. So he's just he's basically held by them. So you can't target him with magic and shooting. Siphon strength. While he's within three of a friendly troll mob, uh, with a unit strength of six or more, and not fleeing, he gets plus one any casting rolls he makes because he's like using their spirits. And then his shawl improves his armor value by one and gives him regen five plus and flammable. The staff is strength plus two, AP minus one, magic attacks, and requires two hand, but for every wound he inflicts, he gets a wound back. So just a cool little shaman to have in your army. And again, anything that quells the leadership, and he's cheaper than a troll hag, so anything that kind of quells the leadership problems that they have and their stupidity is good. All right, the following pages expand to the magic items. We got some weapons, we got some magic armor, some magic standards, and some talismans. So weapons, we've got the bigger, choppier axe for 55 points. So... I just needed to make a note that Orc and Goblin magic items remain the best named magic items in any Warhammer game ever made. They, there's, there's so many great ones. My favorite is Bastion's Big Axe of Bastion, which was in the 6th edition army book. But the Wallop's One Hit Wonder was pretty good too. There's a bunch of really good ones. Uh, Martok's Best Bastion is back, by the way. So the bigger, choppier axe is plus two strength, AP minus two, killing blow. Magical attacks requires two hands and strikes last. So you're going to have to tank some hits, but you can get killing blow off, which is neat. Martog's Best Basha, which is an old magic item, it's back again. Plus one strength, AP minus two. Magic attacks requires two hands, uh, and you get plus one to your weapon skill and initiative, which is great for certain ones, especially like the Orc War boss, because he's slightly lower than the Black Orc. The Accurate Axe, this is another bring back, 30 points. Uh, he's plus one strength, RB and one in magic attacks, and he can reroll any failed hits while using it. However, the weapon strength modifier only applies during the first round of combat, because it's basically a choppa. The backstab is blade. Uh, this is kind of a goblin one. <laughs> goblin bosses and night bosses only. Um, if the wielder of the weapon is engaged with an enemy's flank arc, they can reroll any failed rolls to wound. If the wielder is in the rear, they can reroll any failed to hit and wound. And it's plus one strength, minus one magic attacks. It's a cool little goblin. It's only 25 points. If you're going to get a goblin boss, especially like a riding one, um, it would be really handy on the ones that are like on the wolf boys and stuff. Magic armor, dead art armor, 35 points. Uh, it only on guys who are infantry, cavalry, or chariots, and no monstrous guys. Uh, the Ard suit of armor, the dead Ard suit is uh, full plate. In addition, its uh, toughness goes up by one. Toughness six orcs is pretty great. The spiteful shield for 20 points. It is a shield. In addition, uh, to any uh, any enemy model that rolls a natural one, making it a hit or wound roll against them, takes a strength four hit with an AP of dash. So it's the hit back shield. So some talismans. We've got sparkly wizard finder. <laughs> it's like a little like like little like like scanner for finding wizards. Um, the bearer of the sparkly wizard finder has magic resistance minus two and hatred enemy wizards because he's just like, he's out to get them. The effigy of Mork, um, any enemy, uh, sorry, any model that directs its attacks against the bearer of the effigy of Mork is minus one to hit because you're scared of him. The magic standard, the angry lad's flag, uh, a unit carrying the aggro hands gains frenzy. The spider banner, a unit carrying the spider banner gains poison attacks. If the unit already has poison attacks, then the uh, attack will wound automatically on a natural roll of five or six rather than just six. The Banner of the Nomads, when a unit carrying the Banner of the Nomads makes a charge, flare, pursue roll, it may re-roll any dice that roll a natural one before discarding any dice that are required to be discarded. And the Banner of the Wilds, a uh, unit move, carrying the Banner of the Wilds gains the move through cover special roll. So some mid-range priced banners that all do like functionally neat things to, especially if you have move through cover for like mounted units and stuff like that. They'll, they'll synergize a bit with the, the army lists in here. Uh, we got some enchanted items. Necklace of the Blessed Teeth. Um, you can reroll any armor roll, ward save roll, or generation roll of one. So that's a 50 point item, but like very handy for low dice roll saves. Grizzly trophy racks for 30 points, black orc bosses, orc bosses, goblin bosses, and night goblin bosses only. All enemy units within six of the bearer of the grizzly trophy racks suffer a minus one modifier to their leadership characteristic to a minimum of one. And the thinking orc's hat. The wearer of the Thinking Orcs hat improves their initiative characteristic by one. In addition, the wearer of and any unit they've joined is not subject to Impetuous. So that's a, that's a cool like, way to make your unit kind of more reliable for 25 points. Arcane Items, the Staff of Batum, <laughs> 55 points. It gains a plus three modifier, sorry, plus D3 modifier to the result of any casting roll. However, if they roll a natural double one or natural double six when making a casting roll, they explode. <laughs> Place a five inch blast input over the bearer. And every model friend or foe underneath takes a strength six hit with an AP of minus one if they, they fail the roll. The staff's then destroyed and can't be used again because it just explodes. It's so funny. I love working out magic items. Uh, the Idol of Gork, 40 points. The Bear of the Idol of Gork increases the range of all their spells by three inches. And additionally, or in addi additionally, uh, once per turn, the Bear of the Idol of Gork can reroll a casting roll. And then the Hag's Brew for 25 points. It's Orc Shamans, Goblin Shamans, Night Goblin Shamans only. In addition to the Lords of Magic they may normally know, um, you can take uh, troll magic spells. And that's it. 
that's our that's our cool new addition to the orcs and goblins. So what do I think? Uh, thoughts. I'm surprised by two things. I'm surprised there isn't a night goblin army in here. I'm surprised there's not spider rider stuff in here. But it feels like anything that was key featured in Age of Sigmar isn't getting rules in the old world because they're trying to focus on miniatures that they can still produce that aren't currently in production. So not and I so the thing I'm really surprised by is the Savage Orcs aren't in here. I thought the Savage Orcs were like a lock for this. I thought the trolls would have been the Savage Orcs. The, the Rider Army, I'm not surprised by, because honestly, that's those are kits don't get used in Age of Sigmar and are just cool. And like a, a Rider Army is kind of a traditional Orc Army. But the Savage Orcs not getting their own list feels weird, but doesn't feel weird if the Bone Split is basically make up for that, so not going to put it in here. I really do hope they do like a Night Goblin Army. I mean, not that you can't make them out of the Ravening Hordes. Like, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, but just getting a little additional stuff Especially when like the Savage Orcs and the Badlands kind of like go hand in hand more than the Trolls do a little bit, I think. Um, I was a bit surprised by. So yeah, I'm glad it's in there. I'm glad the Troll Hag stuff's in there. I'm glad that all of the new model or the older models from Forge World got rules in this book too. Um, the, both the armies feel interesting. Again, they're, they're like the ones in the previous Arcane Journals. They're a bit limited in what they take, but at the same time, that's fine. Um, it does make me hopeful for the Dwarf book because I'm really hoping the Slayer army's in there. <laughs> I think it'd be great if the old Slayer army from Storm of Chaos came back with like the Goblin Hewer, because I think I, I, don't, I might still have my Goblin Hewer somewhere. I have one. I know I painted one. I wonder where it is. I might have gotten rid of it, but I definitely had a Goblin Hewer. And I have a lot of unpainted Slayers, so it'd be fun to make a Slayer army. Um, but the fact that the Troll army's in there, some slightly weirder stuff's in there, kind of gives me hope for what they're going to do in the future. So I guess we'll see. Uh, overall, I like it. I think that it just brings to the four two neat army lists. They're very light, like as far as like the 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 amount of stuff in them goes, but they're not designed to be big books, and you're not, they're not designed for you to need them. There's not again. I like the fact that you don't need anything that's in here, but it just unlocks additional stuff that you could use, right? Like these are cool magic items, but this is the only page that really is a thing you'd want and or that you'd need to just to play the core list if you want to kind of expand it. The rest of it's just kind of cool optional stuff that's fun and thematic and the little bit of like additional background info taking us into the current timeline's cool. I like the nods, the older starter sets, like the pony cart being in there because there's some stuff that you might have that you'd want to use. Um, and I like the fact that they're bringing back the old trolls. Like I love those old trolls. Those are, I think they're Ali Morrison trolls. They're great miniatures. So seeing the old troll miniatures back, yeah, these guys, the old stone trolls. Oh my God, they're so good. And then these like weird mid-range 8th edition trolls too that are also stone trolls, but I think these are the best trolls. The blue trolls are the best trolls right there. Like these are, these are fine. This is, this is the trolls I want right there. And then these old, oh, the old river trolls. Oh my God, yeah, get rid of these, whatever. The, these right here, give, give me give me some old Morrison trolls, some old Allie, Allie and Trish Morrison trolls. They're fantastic. Shout out to Allie and Trish Morrison for making some of the best monster miniatures ever. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that stuff's coming back. Like, if this is a love letter to older editions of Warhammer, then use it as an excuse to bring older stuff back. I'm kind of fine with that. Uh, it, there's, I think there's kind of like a cynical take on it where it's like, no, they're just making sure that they're selling the old range uh, so they're not, they're not bumping into the Age of Sigmar stuff. I think the non-cynical take is, no, there's lots of cool old miniatures we'd like to produce again and do as like on demands and that people have in their collections. Let's also focus on that. Same with the Forge World line. Um, let's focus on that and make that the point of these. I feel like that's the intent of the designer. People can take it either way, however they want. I'm going to choose to take it as you took you put pictures of Morrison trolls in here. That was what you were doing. You were trying to you're trying to bring back old Alec Morrison trolls and old Forge World stuff and give us a way to play with it again. And I'm kind of fine with that. So I'm pumped to see the dwarf one because obviously dwarves are my, my jam. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm kind of pulling for an Air Force army and an all troll army. I think that'd be super cool. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more GMG reviews. Thanks for workshops and along the book. Thanks, Tom Ash. Have a great day.